Hi everyone and welcome to this quick structure where we're going to be showing the links between Revit Structure 2013 and Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis 2013. So what I'm going to do here is pass a very simple frame through uh, with some loads on into Robot. We'll make the analysis in Robot and then we'll bring uh, the information back into Revit. So if we just take a look at what we've got here, we've got the physical uh, framework here. Now, for those of you that are not too familiar with Revit, basically, uh, you can see here we, we're not modelling connections, and generally we wouldn't in Revit. Um, you can see that the actual physical members aren't actually attached together. If we take a look now at the analytical model, you'll see that the analytical model is connected. Okay, We have connectivity between the uh, lines here and the nodes. So if I go ahead and, and just switch on the analytical nodes as well, yeah, you can see that they're, they're switched on. Um, this is really what goes out for the analysis and you can also see that we have boundary conditions added in on the bottom. This is so I don't actually physically have to um, model up um, foundations. So you can see in here that we have the boundary conditions where we can set them to fixed or pinned or release the conditions if we wanted to. So what I'm going to do here is go to the analyze ribbon and I'm going to send this across to robot structural analysis. Now here I can send the model directly through into robot. If I haven't got Robot on my machine, I can generate an RTD file that the engineer could then pick up and make use of. In the options, I'm going to um, execute model correction in Robot. That will just check for stray nodes um, and, and actually correct those uh, errors, if they're not too large, of course. You can obviously manually do that in Robot afterwards, but that's quite nice to have that in there. Uh, the release conditions, I'm just going to say um, don't use the Revit settings. I'll put those on myself in Robot. And then on the additional options tab, I'm going to say choose the best matching uh, materials. Obviously, we could check those in Robot again if we wanted to. An interesting set setting here is the ability to take curtain walls through as well. So you can actually take the mullions and panels through into Robot, for, you know, and obviously put uh, loading on those and bring those back in as frames, which is quite interesting. And then I could actually take forward the drawing plan view if I wanted to. Um, as an option as well. You can see we can use the model offsets as the analytical model and so forth. So it's quite good. So what we'll do, uh, because I've actually got Robot on my machine, I'm going to just directly transfer it there. But as I say, if you didn't have Robot on your machine, you could use the RTD file that the engineer could then later pick up. So it doesn't take too long to transfer across. So we'll probably just execute that correction in there. Now it's making the changes, looking at the supports, and it's done. So let's now take a look at that in Robot. So here's Robot Structural Analysis 2013. You can see the frame has, has come across just how we expected. Uh, if we put the physical sections on, yeah, we can see those here. Because uh, we're, we're working on uh, an analytical tool now, you can see we're actually looking on uh, centroids now yeah, of, the, of the structural members. Let's put that back to uh, stick model at the moment. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the loads in here as well. So you can see we've got a dead load, which is the self weight of the structure. Uh, we've also got a live load on there. We've got uh, a wind load actually in there as well. Yep. And another wind load there. So we've got two wind loads in, in total there. Yep, the, the first wind load was just a nodal force, as you can see on there. Right, all of those uh, have just been combined together into a simple uh, combination, as you can see there. And what we'll do is we'll analyse that. So we'll hit on calculations. That's now done. And we'll now take a look at some basic results. So what I want to do here is actually look at um, the results for the simple case. Yep, so the, the combined loads there. And perhaps we'll start off by showing the moments. Okay, so there's a nice uh, plot on the moments there. If we come across the parameters here, we might want to show that as a, a field fence, like so. We could put on labels, yep, so we can actually see the values there. So they're the sort of results that we can we can bring forward um, from Robot. So what we'll do is we'll um, get rid of those moments just for a minute. Obviously, if I wanted to see deformations, yeah, we could potentially uh, pop those on as well and actually see. Um, deformed bars in there. But again, we'll take those off there. So what we want to do is really see if the members are going to stand up to the, the loads that we're putting on. So we can go into Steel Design. Yep, and what we'll do here is we'll verify that the members are correct. 
So we'll hit calculations. We can see most of the uh, bars have actually passed. Some are over designed, as you can see by the ratio here. Some are under designed. Uh, this one here is a failure at 1.64. So we need to do something about that. So that's bar number 9. Okay, so let's find out what bar number 9 is. So, oops, there are nodes. So we'll put the, uh, the bar number on. There it is. So we'll make a change to that. Let's just swap that out for 457 maybe. Uh, we'll calculate that again. Uh, go back and select the member verification. So they're the bars it's going to verify. And then hit calculations again. This time you can see they've all passed. So if we now look at bar number 9. Yeah, it's pretty much smack on there. 0.91 which is okay. If you wanted to see that in a, in, in a better form. To actually get an idea of the design ratio. We could actually produce a calculation note. So whoops. Sorry not a calculation note. Uh, an analysis of the ratios there. Let's just uh, move this out so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, if we change the way the graph looks there, that might look a bit better. Yeah, there we go. So obviously we can see uh, the ratio of uh, one there, and these ones are fairly close. These ones are a little bit over-designed. Yeah, and so on. So that's a nice, quite a nice way of looking at the information. Right. So obviously you can see I've actually made a change there within Robot. What I'm going to do is go back to my um, model here, and geometry, and I'm actually going to add a new bar in, because obviously that bar was already there, but I just changed it. So I'm physically going to add a new member in. Um, maybe we'll put a piece of bracing across there, like so, and another piece across here. Okay, so you can see I've actually added two extra bars in there. Right. So we'll recalculate that, and perhaps what we'll do now is we'll have a little bit of look at um, connections, because obviously we can transfer the connections backwards and forwards uh, between uh, Robot and Revit. It might be we, we try and get a connection in here, so what we'll do is we'll select both those items like so, and we'll go to connections. Okay, and what you better do here is do a automatic calculation. Oh, let's just go back in there and refresh that. Okay. So you can see there's the uh, the connection that's come up with. I'll just go with that. That's fine. Uh, let's have a look at the result. So we just need to recalculate that. Okay. So you can see that's passed. That's again a little bit of an over design there, but fine. You know, we'll, we'll go with that. It's purely just to show really the the transfer between Revit and Robot. So. Let's go back to our um, model here, back to the geometry. Okay, if we put that back into uh, stick model there, you can see we've got the, the connection on there. And now we will get this back into Revit itself. So let's go back into Revit now. Like so. Uh, we'll go back to our frame. And what we do here is we bring the model back in. Now prior to doing that, what I would recommend is that you actually save the model. Yeah, you save the model out first as a different name. So if I go to, if I do this, so if we do um, save project here, um, what we're doing here is we'll say Revit frame uh, Rev A and we'll save that out. Okay, just give it a few seconds. Right, so what I'm now going to do is actually bring this uh, change back in. So we go to Robot Structural Analysis link. This time we're going to update the model. And in the update options, I'm going to ask it to actually bring forward the connection that I put on as well. Now you can see if we've actually done any concrete work in here, we could actually bring back all the rebar that we've created and so on. Okay, and we'll go ahead now and update from robots. Now also what it what it will do, what it has a capability of doing, is actually bringing forward all the reactions as well. So if I wanted to um, plot forces on the st structure in Revit, you know, show the forces in the X, Y, and Z, and the moments in the X, Y, and Z, I could do that. So we'll just give it a few seconds to bring everything through that it should bring through. So it's just modelling up that connection now. Now at the moment, because of uh, the limitations of Revit, it will only support an end plate connection at the moment. So end plate to column flange. Uh, we won't look at the events report. We'll just go with that. 
Okay, so I can clearly see uh, that the connection's in there. Yep, there it is. Uh, we have that new brace member that we put in in robot there. And our section size has also been changed yep, to a 457. Okay, so that's all well and good. So what I now want to do is actually see exactly what the engineer changed. I might now be the technician that's working back in the structure and I want to see what's changed. So I'm going to go back and open up the original Revit frame. Okay, we'll open that up. And this is obviously before the, the changes happened. That's why I said to save it. And then what we've got is a little, uh, a neat little tool on the extensions ribbon called Compare Models. And you need both models open to do this. And what it will do is it will tell us exactly what the engineer's changed, which is obviously what we need to know as a technician. So I'll just give it a few seconds to compare the elements here. Obviously in a large structure this can take quite a while because um, obviously there's a lot to compare. Right. Okay, so what's basically happened here is we've got some general information. We've got uh, Revit frame here and Revit frame version A there. If I go to the elements, um, let's basically say just show me what's different in here. Yeah, we're going to model categories for example. Let's have a look at framing. Yeah, so I can see that both of these braces here that are in revision A just don't actually exist in this version. Yeah, so you know clearly that's uh, <laughs> something that's worth knowing, which is quite nice. Um, and obviously here I can see that that used to be a 305. The engineers come along and changed it to a 457. Yeah, so quite interesting. So that that's definitely worth doing prior to actually uh, bringing the model back in. Okay, if we go into the analytical model here. Now, at the moment, it hasn't actually pulled forward the um, the results that I wanted it to bring forward. So um, that's probably because I forgot to tick the box, actually. So let's go back through and go back to the link here. Um, in fact, I'm updating the wrong model now, so I'll just close this one down. This is the one, obviously, I brought forward. Let's check the analytical model in there. Oh, there we go. I was looking at the wrong model. Right, so what we're looking at here are the actual forces and loads. So we'll just come in here and we'll change this. Just make them a little bit easier to look at, like so. Um, so obviously, what we're able to do here, if I if I pick on uh, this one for example, can you actually see that we've got the forces in the x, y, and z, and the moments in the x, y, and z? So what that should enable us to do is go and have a look at these and then tag them up. Yep. So we can go to annotate here, tag. Yep. Pick on one of those, and you can see that we get all the information we require. So, of course, on a structural framing plane, you know, if you're going to go through and uh, start to actually show, you know, the main, oops, the main structure and everything else in there, that would be quite a nice way of uh, working and, and you know, bringing forward the results. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, been good for you, and that's actually shown you uh, a little bit of the basics about transferring the model from Revit structure to robot structural analysis. Thanks very much.